लॉजिकल मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू विधिज्ञा प्रेजेंट्स द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस टुडे सेशन विल हैव फॉलोइंग सेगमेंट फर्स्ट ओवरव्यू ऑफ टुडेज न्यूज पेपर सेकंड मस्ट नो टॉपिक्स एंड एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड थर्ड हु इज टाइम विद फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चंस स्टार्टिंग विद द फर्स्ट सेगमेंट ओवरव्यू सो ऑन दिस पेज सो दिस आर्टिकल फ्यूल प्राइस हाइक स्पार्क्स इन अपरोर इन पार्लियामेंट सो आई हैव टोल्ड यू द फ्यूल एंड गैस प्राइसेस हैव बीन राइजिंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ द रशिया यूक्रेन क्राइसिस बिकॉज़ रशिया इज द थर्ड लार्जेस्ट ऑयल प्रोड्यूसर इन द वर्ल्ड आफ्टर यूएस एंड सऊदी अरेबिया now this union cabinet approves mcd reunification bill so what is mcd that municipal corporation bill municipal corporation of delhi bill so under the amendment proposed a unified municipal corporation of delhi by subsuming the there will be a unified municipal corporation of delhi by subsuming the south delhi municipal corporation the north delhi municipal corporation and east delhi municipal corporation and this was trifurcated in the year 2012 So that you have to remember. On this page, no important articles. In this page also no important articles. In this page, this is silver line project, Kerala semi high speed silver line pro- railway project. So this we have discussed already. So we will not discuss this. So today is twenty third March. This is also known as Shahid Day, Shahid Divas. Shahid Divas, or you can say Martyrs Day. Martyrs Day. So on this day, three of India's revolutionary leader, Shahid Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev Rajguru, have been hanged by Britishers. So on the, uh, on the, and on in the memory of these, uh, this Martyrs Day is celebrated. Now on this page, this topic becomes important. It this topic talks about all India. legislative service so this we'll discuss in detail now this this becomes important the national land monetization corporation so this we'll discuss in section explain session this is also an important article we'll discuss in segment 3 now do intake to be based on cuet scores this we will discuss Modi and Johnson discusses crisis in Ukraine. Call for ceasefire. So Modi and Boris Johnson are uh, talking to each other regarding the Ukraine crisis, and both have called for ceasefire in the Ukraine. Now, government raises minimum support price for Jew. so the minimum support price is the uh, is the minimum price that that the government will pay to the farmers for buying their crop so this is for the msp is currently for 23 crops however mostly this msp is used most of the crops under msp are brought are wheat and wheat and rice so remember 23 msp crops and this is recommend this is the recommendation is uh, the com- com- the committee that recommends msp is ceca commission for cost and economic cca is the commission commission that recommends the msp price to the cabinet committee on economic affairs and then that declares the msp price so the important articles are need and indian legislative service nmlc nlmc understanding hypersonic weapon in due intake to be based on cuet score so the article says that one also this article talk about that who were the first secretary general when they were appointed who uh, which service they came from that is not important so the important section start from here so one of the, the article says the one of the prerequisites that demands the post of secretary general is unfairly unfailing knowledge and the vast experience of parliamentary procedure so this this post of secretary general requires the knowledge and vast experience of the parliament procedures parliament's practices and its precedents however most of the civil servants lack this aspects of expertise so what happens most many times the civil servant the ias irs officers are appointed as a secretary general of lok sabha and rajya sabha and since they belong to a different service therefore they are not well aware of the parliament procedures parliament practices and its precedent therefore 
they lack they lack the precise they lack precisely this ex, this aspect of expertise now when the civil servants are hired to the post of secretary general this not only dishonors the purpose of ensuring the independence of the secretariat but also leads to the conflict of interest since parliament is a legislative organ and ex, and civil services are the from the executive civil servants are from the executive organ of the government and therefore it breaches the principle of separation of power the separation of power the separation of principle of separation of power means that legislative legislative executive judiciary must function in their own sphere and they are separate from each other they should not intervene in each other's sphere and article 50 article 50 of constitution also talks about the separation of power between legislative and judiciary the official mandated with the exercise one area of power may not expect to exercise. So these officials, which are civil servant, are mandated to mandated to exercise or function in the executive domain. But how can the government can put them under the legislative jurisdiction and appoint them as a secretary general? Therefore, this breaches the separation of power principle. Now, a strong parliament means a more answerable executive. So this means that parliament so parliament parliament holds executive accountable executive accountable therefore a strong parliament means a more answerable ex executive however the bureaucracy persistently does not allow parliament to be a competent and robust legislative institution since when the bureaucracy appoints civil servants as their secretary general therefore this this answer this executive this this whole strong principle that where parliament means a more strong parliament means a more answerable executive cannot be done when the bureaucracy appoints its own person in the parliament as secretary general so this is also one thing now ensuring competent and legislative robust legislative institution demands having qualified and well trained so in order to have robust legislative institution so apart in the parliament apart from mps there are other, other staff also secretary general also there are different different secretarial staff so ensuring competent and robust robust legislative institution demand so in order to have a robust and competent legislative institution it requires a qualified and well trained staff in place this is what it says creation so article 50 as i told you article 50 always remember from constitution is it it talks about separation between judiciary and executive separation between judiciary from executive creating a common all india service card now this article talks about that there is a need for creating all india service card that is an indian legislative service so all there are currently three all india services ips IAS and Indian Forest Service, Indian Forest Service, IEFS, that is Indian Foreign Service is central government service, not all India service. Therefore, this article talks about creating an all India services known as Indian Legislative Service. A common service can build a combined and experienced legislative staff. Through this, through this service, a common and experienced and well-qualified staff for the secretariat or the secret staff for the secretariat can be recruited. And this can be done under Article 312 of the Constitution. So remember, all India services can be created under Article 312 when the Raj Sabha passes a resolution by special majority. For this, Raj Sabha need to pass the resolution by special majority. So when this can be, when this happens, then only all India services can be created. So this article talks about creating of creation of an all India services under Article 312 by Rajya Sabha by passing of the resolution by special majority. Now the second article is the National Land Monetization Corporation. So we have discussed earlier also. So the Union Cabinet on March 9 approved the creation of NLMC, NLMC National Land Monetization Corporation. This is a special purpose vehicle that the finance minister announced in the union budget to carry out monetization of government and surplus, to carry out monetization of government and surplus land holding of PSU for the surplus land that is there with government and PSU. So you can see that there is a surplus land available with many government departments. When, when you go see railway railway lines apart, there are in alongside the railway, there is huge land that is not used by the government and that is a vacant land. So that land, that type of land can be monetized and the revenue can be generated. So the NLMC will be a firm fully owned by the government. This is a fully owned NLMC. 
it will be fully owned by the government fully owned by the government to carry out the monetization of government and public sector assets in the form of surplus so those assets which are in surplus are unused or are underused so these unused underused and surplus it will also nlmc will also fall under the administrative jurisdiction of ministry of finance this remember that it will fall under the jurisdiction of ministry of finance now so apart from monetizing underutilized or unused land parcel of central public sector enterprises the corporation will also facilitate the monetization of assets belonging to psu that has ceased operation or are so those land to the land or unused or underused land by those central public sector psu you can say public sector undertaking that have either ceased operation or are in the line of strategic disinvestment so land of those psus can be also monetized monetized so beside managing and monetizing the nlmc will act in as an advisory body and support other government entities in identifying so it will also help the government institution to identify their surplus underused or unused land and help them in monet and therefore monetize them in an efficient and professional manner maximizing the scope of value realization since this is a this is a expert body therefore it will for them it will be easy to to find out the unused underused surplus land therefore this will recommend government these are the unused underused or surplus land and then this can be monetized to generate revenue therefore this creation of a special body that is nlmc was required so what does the monetization so we are talking about monetization monetization what what does monetization here mean so the when government monetizes its asset it essentially means that it is transferring the revenue rights of the asset it is only transferring the revenue right revenue right it is not transferring the land or you can say it is not selling the land to private player for a specified period of time so it will transfer that land to a private player for a specified period of time in such a transaction the government gets in return an upfront payment from the private entity regular share of the revenue generated from the asset and promise of a steady investment into the asset and the title rights of the monetization so what happens suppose this is the land now this land will be transferred to the private player private player will pay money to the government and apart from that there will be a share of the government in the revenue generated from this this land and it will be for a certain period of time after the certain period of time the government can will get back its land title and apart from that the, it also talks about that the private player should also investment invest in this land as it will also generate employment therefore the, there are three four purposes why this monet this monetization does not mean selling of the land it means only transfer of the revenue right for a certain period of time so there are different reason why the government monetize its asset one of them is to create new source of revenue so government does not have enough too much money to invest so when this land is given for to the private player for certain period of time the government will get its government will get certain amount of money this this money can be used by the government in making new new infrastructure for developing roads highway ports etc second monetization also done to unlock the potential of so since these are the unused or underused land when this will be given to the private player then this can be better utilized by the private sector therefore it means unlocking the potential of unused or underused assets by involving institution institutional investor or private third monetization is also done to unlock the potential of so this we have discussed now the presence of just now the article highlights there is a one challenge that there need to be multiple multiple players to take part the government must ensure that multiple multiple players are taking part in this monetization exercise because the presence of just a few serious bidders would also give rise to the possibility of less competitive so when there are less bidders therefore there will be less competitive price that government will get and apart from that it also mean that a few private entities might might create a monopoly or duopoly in operating surplus government so for example only one or two government is getting all the land therefore there will be monopoly or duopoly so this is also a challenge that more and more companies or private player or institutional investors take part in this monetization exercise now the third article is understanding hypersonic vapor so we have discussed earlier that russia has used its kinjal kinjal hypersonic vapor in the ukraine so the kinjal aviation missile system with hypersonic aero ballistic missile destroyed a large underground warehouse containing missiles and aviation ammunition in the village of delighten in the ivanko frankvist region so this is not important 
Now, what are the hypersonic weapons? This is important. So they are the maneuverable weapons that can fly. So for hypersonic, the most, the most important, they can fly at the speed of more than, more than five Mach. What is Mach here? That means five times the speed of sound, more than five times speed of sound. The speed of sound is, speed of sound is, is Mach 1. And this hypersonic missile can fly, can move faster than 5 Mach, can move faster than 5 Mach. Therefore, and supersonic missile, supersonic between 2 to 3 Mach. So remember, hypersonic more than 5 Mach and supersonic between 2 to 3 Mach. So the hypersonic weapons travel within the atmosphere and can maneuver midway. They can also maneuver midway. They can also take maneuvers in the midway which combined with their high speed make their detection and inter interception extremely difficult because of their high speed that is more than Mach 5 and because of the maneuver, their maneuver in the midway, it becomes difficult for the air defense system to detect and intercept them. This means that the radars and air defense cannot detect them till they are very close and have only little time to react. Now, hypersonic missiles are a new class of threat because they are capable both of maneuvering, they can they are capable of maneuvering and of flying faster than 5000 kilometers per hour. So that is also important. Kinjal air launch hypersonic missile system has a so the Russia's Kinjal air, air launch hypersonic missile system. Has, the, it has an operating range of over 2000 kilometers. So you have to remember this. Now, what are the so do other countries possess this hypersonic weapons? So we will discuss this. The CRS memo noted that although the US, Russia and China possess the most advanced hypersonic weapon. So currently US, Russia and China possess the most advanced hypersonic weapon. Apart from that, countries such as including Australia, India, France, Germany and Japan are also developing hypersonic weapon technology. So other countries including India are also working on hypersonic technology weapon. India operates appro approximately 12 hypersonic wind tunnels. So India has testing and research facilities for hypersonic weapons. And India has a facility under which a hypersonic weapon move, having speed around 13 Mach, 13 times that of speed sound can be tested. India is also developing an indigenous dual capable hypersonic cruise missile as part of its hypersonic technology demonstration weapon. So this is India's, uh, this is India's, you can say project that is hypersonic technology demon HST TV, hypersonic technology demonstration vehicle under which India is also developing hypersonic missile and with the, and which come, which organization that is DRDO is developing this. Now the last article is due intake. So till now in the due, the admissions are based on the, on the percentage of your 12th exam that how much percentage you have got in your 12th examination. So therefore now what have done a day after UGC made it mandatory for, so in India, there are 45 central universities and now UGC has decided that all these 45 central government university will, un, will admit students to the undergraduate course based on the scores obtained in common university entrance test. Now the admission in these university will be based on CUET. C U E T that is common university entrance tag and this will be conducted by NTA that is national testing agency while announcing that the COT would be mandatory for UG admission it will be mandatory for undergraduate admission for all the central universities it had argued that the test would provide equal opportunities to candidates so there are certain reasons there are many times that students do not get good scores in board examination, 12th examination because they are not ill, because they have other financial or other family problem. So therefore, this will provide an equal opportunity for them to take part in this uh, test and can get good score and therefore can get admission in the central university. Apart from that, currently there are different, different universities conduct different, different, have different, different criteria for admission. But now as per CUET, it is a single examination they, since it is a single examination for 45 central university therefore a single examination would reduce the financial burden on parents because now they have to give only one exam and the students also and the students also would not have to sit for multiple entrance exam to study at a central university so now they give one exam and they can they can be eligible for different different admission different different university currently they have different currently all the universities have different different criteria 
so this will solve the problem of that also the financial burden will also be reduced and student would not have to go through multiple procedures to get admission in the central university of the government now we'll discuss five important questions the question number one national land monetization corporation is under which ministry your options are ministry of defense ministry of home affairs ministry of finance none of the above so the correct option is ministry of finance question number two kinjal missile is hypersonic supersonic subsonic none of the above so the correct option is it's a hypersonic missile the speed of hypersonic missile is more than two mark four mark five mark none of the above the correct option is five mark the speed is more than five mark question number four all india services can be created under which article of constitution your option are article 212 article 312 article 412 none of the above so the correct option is article 312 question number five this is related to russia ukraine crisis minsk accord one was signed in which year your option are 2013 2014 2015 none of the above the correct option is none of the above so that's all for this session stay logical with vidikya your best pal in clad preps